the quality of most foods and beverages decreases with storage or holding time. The shelf life of a product is best determined as a part of the product development cycle. The Institute of Food Technologists, IFT, in the United States has defined shelf life as the period between the manufacture and the retail purchase of a food product, during which time the product is in a state of satisfactory quality in terms of nutritional value, taste, texture, and appearance. The Institute of Food Science and Technology, IFST, in the United Kingdom has defined shelf life as the period of time during which the food product will remain safe, be certain to retain desired sensory, chemical, physical, microbiological, and functional characteristics, and comply with any label declaration of nutritional data when stored under the recommended conditions. The date of minimum durability is defined as the date until which the food retains its specific properties when properly stored. It must be indicated by the words. Best before followed by the date or a reference to where the date is given on the labeling. Depending on how long the food can keep, the date can be expressed by the day and the month, the month and the year, or the year alone. The factors that affect to the shelf life of foods are product characteristics, environmental factors, enzymic reactions, chemical reactions, physical changes, and microbial changes. First, let's see product characteristics. Product characteristics include formulation and processing parameters, that means intrinsic factors. Intrinsic factors are the properties resulting from the makeup of the final product. And include the following. Water activity, pH or total acidity, natural microflora and surviving microbiological counts in final product. Availability of oxygen, reduction potential, natural biochemistry, chemistry of the product, added preservatives, product formulation. The next one is environmental factors. Environment to which the product is exposed during distribution and storage called as extrinsic factors. Extrinsic factors are a result of the environment that the product encounters during life and include temperature, relative humidity, gas atmosphere, and light. Temperature is a key factor in determining the rates of deteriorative reactions, and in certain situations the packaging material can affect the temperature of the food. For packages that are stored in refrigerated display cabinets, most of the cooling takes place by conduction and convection. Simultaneously, there is a heat input by radiation from the fluorescent lamps used for lighting. Under these conditions, aluminum foil offers real advantages because of its high reflectivity and high conductivity. The RH of the ambient environment is important and can influence the water activity of the food unless the package provides an excellent barrier to water vapor. Many flexible plastic packaging materials provide good moisture barriers, but none is completely impermeable. The presence and concentration of gases in the environment surrounding the food have a considerable influence on the growth of microorganisms, and the atmosphere inside the package is often modified. The simplest way of modifying the atmosphere is vacuum packaging, that is, removal of air and thus oxygen from a package prior to sealing. It can have a beneficial effect by preventing the growth of aerobic microorganisms. Flushing the inside of the package with a gas such as carbon dioxide or nitrogen before sealing is the basis of modified atmosphere packaging. For example, increased concentrations of gases such as carbon dioxide are used to retard microbial growth and thus extend the shelf life of foods. MAP is increasing in importance, especially with the packaging of fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh foods, and bakery products. Atmospheric oxygen generally has a detrimental effect on the nutritive quality of foods, and it is therefore desirable to maintain many types of foods at a low oxygen tension, or at least prevent a continuous supply of oxygen into the package. Lipid oxidation results in the formation of hydroperoxides, peroxides, and epoxides, which will, in turn, oxidize or otherwise react with carotenoids, tocopherols, and ascorbic acid to cause loss of vitamin activity. With the exception of respiring fruits and vegetables and some fresh foods, changes in the gas atmosphere of packaged foods depend largely on the nature of the package. Adequately sealed metal and glass containers effectively prevent the interchange of gases between the food and the atmosphere. With flexible packaging, however, the diffusion of gases depends not only on the effectiveness of the closure but also on the permeability of the packaging material, which depends primarily on the physiochemical structure of the barrier. Many deteriorative changes in the nutritional quality of foods are initiated or accelerated by light. Light is, essentially, 
an electromagnetic vibration in the wavelength range between 4000 and 7000 angstrom. The wavelength of ultraviolet UV, light ranges between 2000 and 4000 angstrom. The catalytic effects of light are most pronounced in the lower wavelengths of the visible spectrum and in the UV spectrum. The intensity of light and the length of exposure are significant factors in the production of discoloration and flavor defects in packaged foods. There have been many studies demonstrating the effect of packaging materials with different light screening properties on the rates of deteriorative reactions in foods. Among the most commonly studied foods has been fluid milk, the extent of off-flavor development being related to the exposure interval, strength of light, and amount of milk surface exposed. In food packaging technology, knowledge of enzyme action is essential to a fuller understanding of the implications of different forms of packaging. The importance of enzymes to the food processor is often determined by the conditions prevailing within and outside the food. Control of these conditions is necessary to control enzymic activity during food processing and storage. The major factors useful in controlling enzyme activity are temperature, water activity, pH, chemicals that can inhibit enzyme action, alteration of substrates, alteration of products, and pre-processing control. Three of these factors are particularly relevant in a packaging context. The first is temperature. The ability of a package to maintain a low product temperature and thus retard enzyme action will often increase product shelf life. The second important factor is water activity, because the rate of enzyme activity is dependent on the amount of water available. Low levels of water can severely restrict enzymic activities and even alter the pattern of activity. Finally, alteration of substrate in particular, the ingress of oxygen into a package is important in many oxygen-dependent reactions that are catalyzed by enzymes, for example, enzymic browning due to oxidation of phenols in fruits and vegetables. Many of the chemical reactions that occur in foods can lead to deterioration in food quality, both nutritional and sensory, or the impairment of food safety. Such reaction classes can involve different reactants or substrates, depending on the specific food and the particular conditions for processing or storage. The rates of these chemical reactions are dependent on a variety of factors amenable to control by packaging, including light, oxygen concentration, temperature, and water activity. Therefore, the package can, in certain circumstances, play a major role in controlling these factors, and thus indirectly the rate of the deteriorative chemical reactions. The two major chemical changes that occur during the processing and storage of foods and lead to deterioration in sensory quality are lipid oxidation and non-enzymic browning. Chemical reactions are also responsible for changes in the color and flavor of foods during processing and storage. Auto-oxidation is the reaction of molecular oxygen by a free radical mechanism with hydrocarbons and other compounds. The reaction of free radicals with oxygen is extremely rapid, and many mechanisms for initiation of free radical reactions have been described. The crucial role that auto-oxidation plays in the development of undesirable flavors and aromas in foods is well documented, and auto-oxidation is a major cause of food deterioration. Non-enzymic browning is one of the major deteriorative chemical reactions that occur during storage of dried and concentrated foods. The non-enzymic browning or Maillard reaction can be divided into following three stages. First one is early Maillard reactions involving a simple condensation between an aldehyde, usually a reducing sugar, and an amine, usually a protein or amino acid, without browning. The second is advanced Maillard reactions that lead to the formation of volatile or soluble substances. And final Maillard reactions leading to insoluble brown polymers. Acceptability of color in a given food is influenced by many factors, including cultural, geographical and sociological aspects of the population. However, regardless of these many factors, certain food groups are acceptable only if they fall within a certain color range. The color of many foods is due to the presence of natural pigments such as chlorophylls, anthocyanins, carotenoids, flavonoids, and myoglobin. In fruits and vegetables, enzymically generated compounds derived from long-chain fatty acids play an extremely important role in the formation of characteristic flavors. In addition, these types of reactions can lead to important off flavors. Enzyme-induced oxidative breakdown of unsaturated fatty acids occurs extensively in plant tissues, and this yields characteristic aromas associated with some ripening fruits and disrupted tissues. 
Aldehydes and ketones are the main volatiles from auto-oxidation, and these compounds can cause painty, fatty, metallic, papery, and candle-like flavors in foods when their concentrations are sufficiently high. However, many of the desirable flavors of cooked and processed foods derive from modest concentrations of these compounds. The permeability of packaging materials is of importance in retaining desirable volatile components within packages and in preventing undesirable components entering the package from the ambient atmosphere. The four major factors that influence nutrient degradation and can be controlled to varying extents by packaging are light, oxygen concentration, temperature, and water activity. However, because of the diverse nature of the various nutrients as well as the chemical heterogeneity within each class of compounds and the complex interactions of these variables, generalizations about nutrient degradation in foods are unhelpful. The physical properties of foods can be defined as those properties that lend themselves to description and quantification by physical rather than chemical means and include geometrical, thermal, optical, mechanical, rheological, electrical, and hydrodynamic properties. Geometrical properties encompass the parameters of size, shape, volume, density, and surface area as related to homogeneous food units, as well as geometrical texture characteristics. Although many of these physical properties are important and must be considered in the design and operation of a successful packaging system, in the present context the focus is on undesirable physical changes in packaged foods. Microorganisms can make both desirable and undesirable changes to the quality of foods depending on whether they are introduced as an essential part of the food preservation process or arise adventitiously and subsequently grow to produce food spoilage. Every microorganism has a limiting water activity value below which it will not grow, form spores, or produce toxic metabolites. Water activity can influence each of the four main growth cycle phases by its effect on the germination time, the length of the lag phase and the growth rate phase, the size of the stationary population, and the subsequent death rate. Whether a microorganism survives or dies in a low water activity environment is influenced by intrinsic factors that are also responsible for its growth at higher water activity. These factors include water binding properties, nutritive potential, pH, redox potential and the presence of antimicrobial compounds. Microbial growth and survival are not entirely ascribed to reduce water activity but are also attributable to the nature of the solute. Key extrinsic factors relating to water activity that influence microbial deterioration in foods include temperature, oxygen, and chemical treatments. These factors can combine in a complex way to encourage or discourage microbial growth. So, these are the factors affecting shelf life of food. We will discuss each and every section of food packaging from our future videos. Thanks for watching and please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this.